I'm Kaylee, and today I'm going to tell you about some of my very favorite middle grade books. I have quite a long list of some favorite middle grade, and this isn't even all of them. Like, this is just the ones that happened to come to mind when I was making this list. So, yeah, this is going to be a ridiculously long video. We're just going to try to get through these as quickly as we can. But first, I'm going to reach back here to our BookTuber shout-out book, and we're going to shout-out somebody randomly. Today's shout-out goes to Peace Love Books. I will leave a link to their channel down in the description, so be sure to go over and subscribe to them. And please do subscribe to this channel if you love middle grade books. And let's dive straight into some classic middle grade. These are in no particular order. These are just some of my favorites. Recently, I reread Hans Brinker and the Silver Skates by Mary Mapes Dodge and really loved it. This is about a poor young man and his sister who are trying to find work to support their family because their father has a head injury. And they really want to join the skating race so that they can win the silver skates. Another one of my favorites is Knock Three Times by Marion St. John Webb. This is about two children who discover a magical land where they have to search for a mystic black leaf so that they can defeat an evil wizard. This book is so full of magic and enchantment and I love it. I love a lot of Edith Nesbitt's books, but my favorite probably, probably my favorite of hers is Five Children and It. This is where five siblings discover a sand fairy and it grants them wishes and of course they wish for idiotic things and the magic all goes wrong with hilarious consequences. It's just so charming and magical and delightful. Of course everybody knows about Little Women by Louisa May Alcott but I also really really love the Eight Cousins duology with Eight Cousins and Rose and Bloom. This is about a young lady who is growing up with seven boy cousins. They're all boys and they're all rambunctious and loud and she's kind of dainty and prim and they're just a little bit overwhelming. This is such a sweet, just very heartfelt duology. Really beautiful. And I really love Jack and Jill by Louisa May Alcott. Jack and Jill take their famous tumble down the hill and broken legs and a spine injury ensue and the two of them have to find ways to entertain themselves while they are laid up in bed recuperating. I just love how wholesome this story is. It sounds like it would be boring following characters who have to stay in bed all day recuperating from their broken legs, but actually it's really interesting and fun. And of course it has that wonderful Alcott charm. One of my favorite books by T.H. White is Mistress Masham's Repose, where a little girl discovers that Lilliputians were brought back to England by Gulliver after his travels, and they are still living. They they're in a secluded area of the estate. But she has to keep their secret and make sure that they don't fall into evil hands that would try to sell them to a circus. Two of my favorite books by Frances Hodgson Burnett, of course, are A Little Princess and The Secret Garden. Both of these are just so enchanting. I go back to these books over and over and over again. I have reread both of these so many times, and every time I am just so fascinated. <laughs> In A Little Princess, Sarah Crew is a rich little girl at a boarding school with everything you could ever ask for. But when her circumstances change, she is forced to be a servant in the same school where she once was a student. And in The Secret Garden, Mary Lennox comes to live in a vast estate where there is a garden that is walled off and she tries to solve the mystery and try to gain entrance into the secret garden. In Granny's Wonderful Chair, by Frances Brown, a young girl discovers that her granny's chair is actually magical. And she and the chair go on some incredible adventures and they end up at the king's court. This is that classic fairy tale style at its best. I actually remember in like ninth or 10th grade, I read this book and I did like an oral book report on this book because I loved it so much and I still love it as an adult. Next, we have the entire Rescuers series by Marjorie Sharp. The first book is definitely my favorite in this series, but all the books in this series are just so adorable. You've got Bernard and Miss Bianca and some characters that you will know from the movies and characters that are not in the movies. For instance, there is a Norwegian mouse who is a sailor named Nils. I've always been kind of sad that he wasn't included in the movies because he's a marvelous character. 
Mother Carrie's Chickens by Kate Douglas Wiggin. This book follows a family from the city who moved to the country and they have to get used to how things are just different in the country. <laughs> this book is adorable and heartfelt and hilarious. I just love the old fashioned style of Kate Douglas Wiggin's writing. Of course, any list of favorite middle grade classics could never be complete without the entire Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. That's kind of an obvious one, but it's just such a good one. If you're not sure where to start with middle grade books and you're not sure where to start with fantasy, this is a great place to start. I will say that I am a very staunch supporter of publication order, not chronological order. So in publication order, you would read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe first. And I think that is very important. Another favorite is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. I adore Wind in the Willows. There is just something so charming about rat and mole and toad and otter and badger. There's something just so adorable about animal characters already. But this story brings just a whole nother level of world building and charm and enchantment. The Wolves of Willoughby Chase by Joan Aiken. This is about children who are being held captive by their evil governess and they cannot escape because there are wolves out in the wood. It's full of fun and adventure. Really, this whole series is fantastic, but this first book is my favorite. Minnow on the Say by Philippa Pierce is about two boys who have a canoe called the Minnow that they go on adventures on on the River Say. They actually discover that there might be an old treasure hidden away by an old miser years ago, and so they try to follow the clues to find the treasure treasure and have all kinds of fabulous adventures. This would be a perfect one to read in the summer because it just has that summer adventure kind of feel. The Great Brain series by John D. Fitzgerald. This would be the perfect series to read if you love Tom Sawyer because it's just very Tom Sawyer-ish. The Great Brain is a young man growing up in the olden days and he is always getting into scrapes and hijinks and mischief, but somehow he always manages to get out of it again. <laughs> the What Katie Did series by Susan Coolidge is one of my favorites. It follows Katie and her siblings growing up at the turn of the century. They have all sorts of shenanigans on the farm <laughs> and they have their own little setbacks and adventures. But in the end, it's the eldest sibling, Katie, who leads the pack. The Would Be Goods is another favorite from Edith Nesbitt. This is about a group of children and they're trying to be good, but somehow it always goes wrong and they end up in trouble. They're really just trying to be helpful, but they always seem to go about it the wrong way. They search for treasure and they get in trouble with the neighbors and they ruin their best clothes. <laughs> they're completely adorable and it's just so much fun. Another favorite from Frances Hodgson Burnett is The Lost Prince. This is about a little orphan boy who befriends a young man and his family is very poor, but gradually the orphan boy begins to discover that they weren't always poor. His new friends definitely have a past. There are a lot of international spies running around and it could be that his new young friend is actually royalty. Another one from Edith Nesbitt is The Railway Children. This is about a group of children who just hang around a railway <laughs> watching the trains go by. It is enchanting and delightful. I love these kind of stories where not a lot really happens, but just the little everyday doings of people just takes on such a significance. It's wholesome and charming and so sweet. I've read several books by Noel Stretfield, but my favorite is Ballet Shoes. I think this is probably a lot of people's favorite. This is about three girls who are adopted into a family, and when that family finds themselves in some financial difficulties, the girls decide to take dance and acting lessons so that they can work on the stage and earn some money for their family. But it's not so easy working on the stage. It's not as easy as they think. I just love ballet shoes. I think I've read it four or five times now. It's just so charming and sweet and lovely. I really love that quirky family. They're just, they're all so nuts and they're all so crazy. And I have a couple of favorites from George MacDonald. He has so many wonderful books, but one of my favorite, kind of like a long short story or a short novella, is The Light Princess. This is about a princess who is under a curse 
where she takes everything lightly and uh, gravity just doesn't have much of an impact on her. So she is light as in she floats around. She isn't heavy. She just floats around and she can't take anything seriously. There are so many great fairy tale elements in this story. I just love the deep themes and kind of like the hidden messages in this story, but also it's just a fun story as well. And I could say the same thing about the princess and the goblin. This is another one with deep themes and even a little bit of allegory sometimes, but it's also just a really entertaining, fun story. This is about a princess who meets her great, great something grandmother and is sent off on a quest along with her friend, Curdy, and they are dodging goblins and having adventures. It has all those great adventure, magical fairy tale elements, but of course there are also deeper meanings behind it as well. I love Eva Ibbotson's books, but one of my favorites is The Secret of Platform 13. Platform 13 has a magical entrance to another world where there are selkies and mermaids and hags and wizards. And when the young prince of that magical land goes missing, a group of these magical folk are chosen to go through the portal to Platform 13 and out into the world to seek for their lost prince. Another favorite from this author is Journey to the River Sea. A young orphan girl is sent with her governess over to the Amazon River called the River Sea because there are places where the Amazon is so wide that you can't see the other side. She's sent there to live with her uncle and aunt and her mean cousins. And she has to learn to adapt to this new jungle life. And she makes friends. And of course has all kinds of amazing Amazon adventures. I adore the Explorer Academy series by Trudy Truitt. I have loved every book in the series as they've been coming out. This story follows Cruz as he attends the Explorer Academy and he is following clues that were left for him by his mother who before she passed away. Clues that will lead him to a secret formula. But there are evil spies who are after the formula as well and he is dodging bullets and having adventures along the way. The Penderwick series by Jeannie Birdsall is just so adorable. All of the sisters in the Penderwick family are unique and weird and delightful. They have all sorts of fun little adventures and they all kind of grow up through each book and discover who they really are. Each book has some sort of fun little mystery or crazy little adventure that they do, but mainly it's just this family being adorable and crazy. The Tuesdays at the Castle or Castle Glower series by Jessica Day George follows a family who lives in a magical castle. The castle keeps moving the rooms around into different places all the time. And there is a mystery in the castle, which must be solved. Like many series, the first book in the series is the best one, but I do enjoy the rest of the series as well. The Princess Academy series by Shannon Hale. This story follows a poor town where there has been a prophecy that says that the next princess of the realm will come from that town. And so a Princess Academy is set up in order to train all the young ladies of the town in the courtly graces and manners. But of course there are people who are trying to undermine the prophecy and before long that little town is under attack. I love the world building in this series. It is so, so intricate and so deep and so fantastic and all the cool characters. Just this series is fantastic. <laughs> the Anola Holmes series by Nancy Springer. This one has been getting a lot of attention lately since the movie came out. Anola is the younger sister of Sherlock and Mycroft Holmes. And they're trying to get her to go to a young lady's finishing school. And she doesn't want to. She kind of wants to do her own thing. When her mother disappears, Enola goes off on her own, searching for her mother and wearing disguises so that her brothers can't find her. And she solves a few mysteries along the way. I just love how clever these mysteries are and how there's so many puzzle aspects and codes and things that you can try to break. It's just, it's just so clever. It's so much fun. The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart. This is about a group of children who are recruited by Mr. Benedict in order to stop a mysterious evil mastermind who is trying to control people with telepathy. Once again, this is a mystery with 
lots of puzzles and I do love stuff with puzzles. And the characters are just so relatable. I just love all these smart kids, all the wonderful character development in this series. It's so great. Then we have Sidekicked by John David Anderson. This follows the sidekicks to superheroes and when the superheroes cannot do their jobs, it's up to the sidekicks to save the day. I really love this book because it kind of takes all those superhero tropes and kind of flips them upside down. And it's really clever in the world building and the character development and everything. This is such a fun story. Then we have the Wildwood Trilogy by Colin Malloy. When her little brother is kidnapped, a girl has to venture into the wild woods where she discovers that there are talking animals and magic and she is the one who could fulfill the prophecy. I do love me a good prophecy. <laughs> the whole Wildwood trilogy is just such a fun, magical adventure. Now, of course, any list with middle grade, modern middle grade books has to include Rick Riordan and Percy Jackson and the Heroes of Olympus. I actually like the Heroes of Olympus series a little bit better than the Percy Jackson series, but I mean, you have to read Percy Jackson first or you won't know what's going on in Heroes of Olympus. I think I just like Heroes of Olympus because then they're a little bit older, the characters are older, and so the content is just a little deeper. Whereas in the first Percy Jackson books, it's a little more childish, a little sillier, I guess. And it's just, it's just hilarious. You just have to come at it with a really fun, silly attitude and just ready to have a good time. Percy and his friends are demigods. They are the children of the gods of Olympus. And sometimes that means that they have pretty cool powers, but it also means there's a lot of monsters trying to kill them. I just adore Percy Jackson. It's so great. <laughs> the Door Within Trilogy by Wayne Thomas Batson. This is about a young man who discovers the door within where he can transport to another realm where he is made a knight and sent on a quest. The thing I really love about The Door Within is you get all the great, you know, sword fighting and knights and quests and magic and monsters and stuff. But also there's all these great spiritual messages because The Door Within is the spiritual door within. So there are all these really positive messages about going on a spiritual journey and discovering God, being forgiven for the things that you've done wrong, and then finding grace with Christ it's just, it's a fun story on the surface, but underneath, it's just so meaningful. The Mismantle Chronicles by M. I. McAllister follows a young squirrel who was born under a special star or something, and there's a prophecy about this young squirrel. I do love a good prophecy. And somehow the kingdom will be restored. I just love these adventures in the Mismantle Chronicles. There's just something so completely engrossing in these stories. Once you start reading, you just cannot put it down. I also love the Septimus Heap series by Angie Sage. Funnily enough, this is one series where I feel like the first book is actually kind of one of the weaker books in the series. The third and fourth books, I think, are actually my favorite. So if you don't like the first book, maybe just kind of stick with it because the series gets really, really good. Septimus Heap is the seventh son of a seventh son, but he is kidnapped when he's a baby and forced to work in a child army. But as he grows up, he discovers his true parentage and is sent on adventures. He becomes a wizard's apprentice and begins to unlock the magic within. This whole series is so intricate, the world building, and I love that it has maps. I do love fantasy books with maps. There is just so much going on in this series. I can't even describe to you like every kind of fantasy thing that you could possibly think of. It's in there somewhere. The Charlie Bone series by Jenny Nimmo. Charlie Brown is sent to a magical academy where each person can develop their one magical gift. So each person just has one magical thing that they can do and that's their thing. I just love the amazing world building in Charlie Bone, the magic, 
music and the characters and everything. I have so many favorite characters from this series. <laughs> Those are the kind of characters that they just worm their way into your heart and you never forget them. Gregor the Overlander by Suzanne Collins. Yes, Suzanne Collins wrote other things besides just The Hunger Games. In the Underland Chronicles, Gregor uh, and his little sister accidentally fall down some kind of shaft in the ground and they end up in the Underland. And there they find that there is a thriving community of people, talking rats and bats and all kind of strange creatures. And the people there believe that Gregor is the one who will fulfill the prophecy. I'm telling you, I love these books with a prophecy. <laughs> so he gets sent on a adventurous quest and has to defeat evil guys, all the while trying to keep his baby sister safe and just trying to make it back to the Overland. Oh, I just love how imaginative this whole series is. It is so much fun. Then we have the Artemis Fowl series. Artemis is a young criminal mastermind who discovers that fairies are real. And in order to steal the fairy gold, he comes up with a very clever plan. But Holly is on the fairy police force and she is trying to stop him from stealing all the fairy gold. That sounds really simplistic, but it's actually much more complicated than that. And it develops over so many books. I can't even remember how many books are in the series now. It is so hilarious and funny. And there's so much adventure and like twisting plot lines. And there's all this crazy fairy magic and weird monsters and, and you know, crazy time travel and all kinds of insane stuff. And then we have the Keys to the Kingdom series, starting with Mr. Monday by Garth Nix. A young man was supposed to die, but right before he dies, he is given a magical key and he becomes... Mr. Monday. He's whisked away to another land where the only way that he can return back to his life is to acquire all the different keys. So he and his friends go on a quest through the different kingdoms in order to try to get the keys. Every single book in this series is so completely different because every kingdom that he goes through is really different and all the characters that he meets and everything. Every single one is so imaginative and unique. It's just it's just so fantastic. The Castle in the Attic and the sequel, The Battle for the Castle by Elizabeth Winthrop. This is about a young man who discovers a castle with some little knight figurines in the attic and he is magically miniaturized and placed into the world of the castle and he has to fight with the princesses and the knights. This is such a feel-good book. Like, it's just a fun adventure and it's just so whimsical and enchanting. I just love it. The Two Princesses of Bamar by Gail Carson, Carson Levine. This is about two sisters, the princesses, one who is very bold and the other one who is really shy. And when the bold princess gets sick, the shy princess has to go on a quest to find a magical cure for her sister. She has to overcome all these magical obstacles and stuff. I do love a magical quest. It's just fantastic. The thing that really makes this book one of my favorites though is the character development for that shy sister. The Sherlock Academy series by F.C. Shaw. In the world of this story, Sherlock Holmes and Watson were real people. And when they passed away, they kind of left this legacy of establishing this school for people who want to be detectives. So there is a group of children who are enrolled in the school and they are trying to solve mysteries and handle all of their classes. I just love this series. It is so clever and fun and it just has so many great characters and everything. If you love Sherlock Holmes, then you will definitely love this because it has all of those great like historical elements of Sherlock Holmes. It has so many fun like little inside jokes. Like if you know the Sherlock Holmes stories, then you know this little thing, you know? And so it's just, it's just so much fun. Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim by Robert C. O'Brien. Mrs. Frisbee is a little mouse and her son is very ill. And so she goes to the clever rats of Nim asking them for help. And she kind of gets involved in all of their clever plans. It ends up being quite an adventure for Mrs. Frisbee. A hugely favorite series of mine is Swallows and Amazons by Arthur Ransom. This is about a group of children who 
who are on holiday in the Lake District. And they have a little sailing boat named the Swallow. And they have some sailing races against some other children with a boat called the Amazon. They go camping and hiking and they have all sorts of little adventures and all kinds of fun around the lakes. I just love stories about sailing and stuff and you get to learn some nautical terms and everything. There's something just so charming and wholesome about these stories and I just, I just love it. Sometimes the things that you love the most, it's the most hard to describe exactly why you love it and to pinpoint exactly what it is that just draws you into this story. But just take my word for it, these books are so wonderful. Then we have The Moore Child by Eloise Jarvis McGraw. The Moore Child is a changeling. She is a fairy child who has been placed kind of basically at to live as a human, but she doesn't really fit in with the other humans and they all think she's weird and they, they shun her. I really love the deep themes in this book. It talks about you know, belonging and acceptance and just being who you are. And of course, we have all the lovely magical fairy elements in the story as well. It's so good. A new favorite of mine is Kiki's Delivery Service by Aiko Kadono. I know I said that wrong. That was really terrible. Kiki is a young witch who has moved to a new town to do her witch's apprenticeship. She doesn't really have that many magical powers other than her ability to fly. So she starts a delivery service where she flies all over town delivering packages. However, Kiki is used to living in the country and she's not really used to the big city and so it takes some getting used to. This is such a beautiful, charming story. Just, just so sweet and adorable. I just love Kiki. She's so plucky and fun. I also want to include the Sherlock Holmes Children's Collection edited by Stephanie Baudet. These are the original Sherlock Holmes stories but they've been edited down for children. And in these editions, they have have lovely black and white illustrations that are so cute and fun. Actually, these stories contain most of the original dialogue. It's just some of the scarier parts have been kind of toned down and some of the old fashioned language has been kind of modernized, you know, and simplified a little bit for younger readers. But mostly it's just the same classic Sherlock Holmes stories that we all know and love. Then we have the Myrtle series, starting with Premeditated Myrtle by Elizabeth C. Bunce. This is about a young lady growing up in Victorian England, and society wants her to be a prim and proper Victorian young lady, but she just wants to solve mysteries. <laughs> so Myrtle gets into all sorts of trouble and shenanigans and mischief, running around town trying to solve murders. These books are so hilarious and funny and just, just so absolutely delightful. The mystery is really good and the characters are hilarious and it's all so fantastic. Pippa Park Raises Her Game is actually based on Charles Dickens's Great Expectations. Pippa wins a scholarship to an elite school and so she's trying to show off for her new rich schoolmates and she's trying to pretend like she's rich. I really loved the way that all of the elements from Dickens's novel have been kind of reimagined and all of the character roles have been gender swapped. So it's just, it's all kinds of fun. The Green Nose series by Lucy M. Boston. Throughout this series, there are various different children who visit the house at Green Nose at different times and they have different adventures. Sometimes they might have a more magical adventure um, and other times there's no magic. It's just they, they have little adventures and little stuff that they do. Every one of these books is so enchanting. There's something so delightful about the writing that just kind of pulls you into this lovely world of Green No. Then we have a really hilarious story, Petronella Saves Nearly Everyone by Dean Lowe. Petronella's uncle is known for being eccentric, but when he starts eating bugs, Petronella knows there is something really wrong. There are people going missing and her uncle is eating bugs. Petronella knows that she has to solve this mystery before more bugs get eaten and before more people disappear. This book is just so hilarious. I mean, you will be actually laughing out loud, just laughing your head off with this book. It's so crazy. The Island of the Mad Scientist by Howard Whitehouse. Actually, wait a minute. I think that might be the second book. The first book is The Worst School 
or the most hideous school in the world or the worst, what is it? Most awful school in the world. I can't remember the title. Anyway, whatever the first book is, I read these all out of order and so I can't remember what the first one is. These books are just madcap insanity. Half of the characters are actually insane and the other characters are just really weird. <laughs> They are always getting up to crazy adventures and shenanigans. Oh my gosh. I can't even explain the plot of any of these to you because like the plot is so backwards and forwards and insane that it would make no sense if I tried to explain it. You just have to read it. It's just great. The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. Oh, this is such a great mystery. It's been years and years since I've read it, but I just remember what an impression it made on me and how all the twists and turns of this mystery plot and all the different characters and everything, it just blew my mind. I was just amazed. You just have to read it. It's such a great mystery. <laughs> I will warn you though, after you've read this, every other mystery book will just not be as good in comparison. A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle. This is about a family where the father has gone missing. He was a scientist working on some strange experiments. His children discover that they may have found a way to travel through time and space to find their father. I I really can't tell if this is fantasy or sci-fi or what it is. It's just so indescribably beautiful. This is one of those books where no matter how many times you read it, you find something different in it every time. There's just so many layers and so much depth. The whole Wrinkle in Time series is really fantastic, but I think this first book is my favorite. A Tale of Time City by Diana Wynne Jones. It's been a few years since I've read this one and I don't quite remember all the things of the plot except there's these two kids and they go time traveling and they get into time travel shenanigans. This is just such a fun book. Like if you're just looking for something that is just adorable and fun and exciting and adventure and everything, just a feel good kind of book, this is that book. And the last one we have for today is The True Confessions of Charlotte Doyle. Charlotte Doyle is going on a sea voyage to meet up with her family across the ocean. And although she was supposed to have a family traveling with her, she ends up as the only passenger on board this ship. And when there is a mutiny, she has to choose sides. Does she side with the tyrannical captain or does she side with the crew? I love the kind of slow burn adventure in this because there's a lot of events and a lot of unrest and different different little scenarios and stuff that leads up to the big mutiny. And so it's like, there's not much adventure, but it's all just kind of boiling underneath the surface until suddenly adventure. This is just such a well-crafted story. It is so fantastic. I'm sure that there are tons of other books that I am forgetting that as soon as I finish filming, I'm gonna think, oh yeah, I should have included that book in my video. I'm sure there are tons that I'm that I'm already forgetting and I'll put them in the description or I'll put them in the comments or something of the ones that I forgot. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what is one of your favorite middle grade books. As lengthy as this list is, I am always looking for more middle grade. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world. Mm -hmm.